Hey Swayers, it's Karnak of Star Wars Armada Explained. Today we're going to look at Rift Assault. Rift Assault is an objective from Rebellion on the Rim that will be released hopefully in September, end of September. So Rift Assault, pretty straightforward. I'm going to read the card all the way through. You see I've got it blown up big there in the box there. Um, let's actually get into reading the objective or doing it or explain it. Uh, if you want to follow along, go to the Star Wars Armada wiki and pull up the objective card from the Building the Rim expansion page because at some point I'm going to have to shrink that down so it's not blocking anything. All right, setup. Place obstacles as normal. Adding the gravity rift and excluding the station. Now the gravity rift, I want to point out that the gravity rift is roughly the same size as the station. It, it is like slightly tad bigger but there's not like any huge change. And so when we go to do Vassal, I'm going to be using the station as a stand-in because in the Rift Assault, you replace the station with the Gravity Rift, essentially. Now, what does the Gravity Rift do? What are some of the unique pro pro properties that it grants on the table? Well, it's still an obstacle, so it still obstructs line of sight. This is what it says. When a ship deploys at distance 1 to 2 of a gravity rift, its speed dial must be set to speed 0. So this affects things like Radis, or if you've got Grav Shift Reroute, you know, if you can move that gravity uh, rift token around, I guess if ships are like redeploying or something like that. Or if sh a ship is getting dropped by like Profundity, for example, that's a deployment. So just know if you're at distance 1 to 2 of the gravity rift, you have to go speed 0 on your, your deployment speed. When a ship overlaps a gravity rift, its speed dial must be reduced to zero. When a ship at a distance one to two of a gravity rift resolves the determined course step, its speed is temporarily reduced by one to a minimum of speed zero until the end of that maneuver. So guys, can't stress this enough, don't get your ship stuck on a gravity rift if they're going like speed one and you have no way of, of helping that ship escape the gravity rift, uh, like super star destroyers, large ships. Okay. Cause if they get stuck on these things, they are going to have a really bad time. All right. That's all we need to read from the rebellion in the room booklet. Let's dive right into reading the rest of it here. Special rule. While a ship is attacking a ship, again, not squadrons, no, no ship to squadrons, not squadrons of ships, just ship to ship interaction only. If the defender is beyond distance one of any obstacles and the defender does not have an objective token, the attacker can spend one die with any icon to assign an objective token to the defender. While a ship with an objective token is defending, during the resolve attack effect steps, or step, the attacker can discard that objective token to change one die to a face with an accuracy icon or a one hit icon, and no other icons. If the attacker belongs to the second player, it can change one die to a face with any icon. Then, the attacker's owner gains one victory token. End of round, each ship at distance 1 to 2 of the gravity rift that is speed 1 or lower suffers one face down damage card. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this looking small again so we can go over how this objective plays. So pretty much it's, it's screed for everybody. It's the Imperial Commander screed, but everyone gets him. Um, except that only the second player benefits from being able to change to a uh, to any icon facing um, but let's get into it so I've got some ships here I'm gonna go ahead and just throw them off the the deployment or off the play mat for a moment all right we're gonna say that the rebel player is the first player all right and then in this game if you had the station you essentially you chuck the station out and you replace it with the gravity rift so the station would be gone Again, I don't have the Gravity Rift available on Vassal yet, but we're going to pretend the station is the Gravity Rift for this. And to kind of help with that, I'm going to like flip it, uh, flip it upside down, and I'll put an objective token on it. There we go. That should help. Okay. So, setup. You place obstacles as normal. So, just go ahead and do the normal obstacle thing. Now, obviously, as the second player... 
probably benefits you to place that gravity rift where it's going to be most helpful to you first before you know don't let the first player grab it um, as depending on where you want it to go I mean you can place it anywhere in the play area or the setup area which is in the play area so beyond distance three of a player's edge within the setup area which is defined by those vertical lines so you know you could do something like a like a corner if you want to do like a corner deployment you could place that gravity rift somewhere right over here where you would want it to uh, to kind of throw out that aura of that distance one to two. And again, since it can be placed in a situation like on the edge, you know, you can kind of create a little buffer zone. If anyone deploys there, they're going to go speed zero. You know, so this does kind of pair well with like interdictors and their grab well projectors and, and etc. Um, but we're going to go ahead and say we're going to throw this guy, you know, like right there, for example. There we go. Boom. That's where it's going to go, the gravity rift. And then the first player is like, you know what, I don't like that. And you're like, well, I don't like that either. And then everyone throws obstacles down and, you know, there's obstacles everywhere. Perfect. I'm going to say something like that. All right. Again, making sure that everything is beyond distance one of each other. Perfect. All right. And then you do your normal deployment. So Rebel player has to deploy first. Uh, obviously, he wants nothing to do with that gravity rift. So he's going to deploy like his MC-80 over here. And then, you know, you can just put a Star Destroyer, and we're going to say that these guys are going to be uninteresting. But in terms of, like, the gravity rift, I'm going to throw down some ships over here just so that I cover this. So, again, as I read in the rule booklet, if you deploy a ship at distance 1 to 2 of the gravity rift, uh, typically in deployment, you set a speed where, you know, you has to be a speed, you cannot go 0, well, in this situation, it would make your ship go speed zero since you're at one to two. So we'll say that everyone else is going like speed one. But this MC-30, this player's deciding he wants to put it near the gravity rift and it's going to deploy him at speed zero. Something like that. Perfect. Okay. Now, before I get on to the special rule and everything else associated with this again let's go over the gravity rift so the gravity rift again if you're at distance one to two of it um it will always slow you by one speed every single time that you could try to conduct a maneuver so unless you've got a way to bump this mc30 up to speed two you know so if you use a navigate you reveal a navigation you use it and you go to speed one not going anywhere you have to wait a whole nother turn Next turn, you can go from speed 1 to speed 2. Okay, but then it's going to force you to only go a speed 1 maneuver. So, okay, do the speed 1 maneuver. All right. Um, now you remove the tool, and then, you know, start of round 3. Now you can go speed 3, but again, reduces your speed by 1. So you can only do a speed 2 maneuver. And then, uh-oh, that's not enough to clear this... Uh, this gravity rift, you start on it, it automatically sets your speed all the way back down to zero. Um, and then at this point, being on the gravity rift, if that is the case where you you are pretty much stuck. <laughs> you are almost never, ever, ever going to be able to get off this thing. Unless you can suddenly boost your speed you know, from zero to two or three, etc. Because just by himself... Um, he's going to have a very difficult time. He's always going to be grabbed by that gravity rift. Now, in this uh, the, exa the example here for rift assault, I am going to read about the end of round. So, specifically for this time only, the gravity rift, if you are at distance 1 to 2 of the gravity rift when you end the round, uh, if you are speed 1 or lower, you suffer a face-down damage card. So for small ships, if they get stuck here, it's really going to beat them up. Again, larger ships or like the Super Star Destroyer are going to have a really difficult time trying to escape this thing. And the whole time they're going to be taking face down damage cards unless their speed dial is set to two or greater. But again, if you've, if you've landed on it, like, it's just bad news. Just don't land on this thing. Don't be scared of it, but don't land on it. You know, you can still use it to... Uh, to be aggressive to towards your opponent, you just got to have a game plan for it. Okay, I think I've covered enough with the gravity rift at this point. I don't think I need to cover anything more about it, but I want to make sure I was pointing all that stuff out. Okay. So how does the rest of the objective work? So we're going to go ahead and say... 
got some ships lined up here. They're all they're all wanting to shoot at each other. All right. I'll say he did some some turns and get his broadside going. All right. So while a ship is attacking a ship is when this is triggered. So we're going to go ahead and say that uh, this Star Destroyer is attacking this Liberty, for example. And you check the range. You've got line of sight. There's no obstruction. Uh, we're going to say he could throw the four red die. It's a Star Destroyer 2 variant. So while a ship is attacking a ship, if the defender is beyond distance one of any obstacles, and if that defender does not have an objective token, the attacker can spend one die with any icon to assign objective token to that ship. So what's the first thing that has to happen? You need to throw your initial attack pool. So for this Star Destroyer 2, it needs to throw its four red die. It needs to throw its initial attack pool. Then in the while attacking part, you can then see... Uh, is this Liberty beyond distance one of any obstacle? It is. This black portion is distance one. Red is two, three, four, five. So the Liberty is beyond distance one of this obstacle. He's not close to it. Uh, or not at distance one of it. So then the attacker can spend one die with any icon. So you'll see here any icon is any of these icons. Either the hit, accuracy, critical, double hits, hit crits, etc. But you cannot spend blank dice. Blank dice do not have any icons on them. So you can't spend a blank dice to trigger this effect. It has to be an icon. So we're going to say we're going to discard this hit, uh, hit die then. Because again, it's any icon. And we're going to... Or I want to say discard. I meant spend. We're going to spend that hit with any icon, which is the hit there, to assign objective token to the defender. We're going to give this Liberty now an objective token. Boom. And then the second part is while a ship with an objective token is defending, during the resolve attack effect step, the attacker can discard that objective token. So this can still be resolved in the same attack, or if you, if you desire. But essentially it's you are spending a die to throw a token on them to then you know, potentially utilize that die to do something else later on the resolve attack step, and also you get victory points. So let's continue on. So while a ship, being the Liberty still in this attack, with an objective token is defending, during the resolve attack effect step, the attacker can discard that objective token. So now we're going to discard that objective token. We put it on, but now we're taking it off. And yes, this can be done in the same attack. It's telling you the timing. You do it in order. So we put it on, and then like, okay, now I'm taking it off. Uh, to change one die to a face with an accuracy icon or a hit icon and no other icons. So now you can change this blank die if you want to an accuracy or to a hit. And no other icons. But if the attacker belongs to the second player, which is the Star Destroyer, because the Star Destroyer is attacking the Liberty with the Rebel was the first player. He can change that one die to a face of any icon. So you could change this to a double hit. Then the attacker owner gains one victory token. And so then you get a victory token which is worth 10 points. That is Rift Assault. So Rift Assault is pretty much a slug slugging match of who can shoot whom. That is beyond distance one of obstacles that you can throw tokens on, claim those tokens, get cool points for it, and it's also a dice fixing mechanic. So as I mentioned before, it's a way better dice fixing mechanic and benefit for second player because that way he can guarantee like critical results he needs on like blue die or black die, or even just dice fixing his red die to get just double hits. Now the first player the only benefit he gets from, from doing this, from spending his dice, uh, he can change dice to accuracies or hit icons. So that is good for like guaranteeing like a hit on like a, a scatter a scattering flotilla, or if you're trying to find that extra die to lock down a defensive token maybe you couldn't get otherwise. Um, but each player is able to get 10 points every time they spend a die, put an objective token on that chip, then in the same attack, take that object token off and change that, you know, any die to any icon face. 
But again, you can't spend a blank icon. It has to have an icon on it already. So if like if you roll all blanks, you're out of luck. Um, so Rift Assault, I just I think it's very interesting. I I think that as second player, is this going to grant you as much benefit as maybe another objective as you're taking a second player? Because it still is helping first player to some small degree. Um, so that's entirely up to you. And again, you know, if you put all these obstacles down to try to make like a little fortress, well, if the first player just deploys way over here and is not wanting to get, or if he just deploys, you know, he could deploy in the obstacles, I guess. That's where the gravity rift placement, I think, is going to be really important. It's like, hey, if you don't want me to farm these tokens off you and do all this crazy cool jank stuff, like, you got to fly into these obstacles, specifically this gravity rift. So this rift assault, I think, is actually kind of neat with Sato. Uh, it really helps the Sato to dice fix at long range, where he typically struggles. Um, just interesting. Interesting list. I'm not sure where that's going to fit in the meta, because I haven't had time to really sit down and analyze this objective in terms of like fleet list archetypes that could be available. But I'm going to say it's not a bad objective, it's just a different objective. So like of all things, choose objectives that you think are going to be most beneficial for your fleet. Uh, I'm not aware of any other crazy interactions or anything else going on. Of course, all other card effects, like if you did have Screed, you could like cancel two die to change two die to you know hit crit icons or hit critical icons, etc. Um, so I mean, all other stuff still has its normal effect. Um, but of course, if you feel like I got anything wrong or if I missed anything, please be sure to let me know, point it out, leave a comment. If you do have just other questions, I do respond. And hey, I appreciate you guys and uh, hope you've been enjoying these videos and I'll catch you later.